My name is Philippe Keila. I am chairman and CEO of Euronews. For a French man of my age, uh, I'm born in 49 after the Second World War. Uh, the first um, environment I lived in was, uh, uh, coming out from my parents' experience, the fact that we, uh, we were in the, in the aftermath of the Second World War and uh, uh, when I was born, the, the living in France was still a little difficult. It was, uh, it was hard time for uh, French and uh, for all European people. And as you very well know, thanks to the Marshall Plan, uh, we developed uh, rather rapidly and uh, we recovered the growth and the state of wealth we had before the Second World War. But it lasted at least uh, 15, 20 years, up to the 60s. And the 60s were really the, the, the time when, when Europe recovered completely. Uh, it was very much marked by the, uh, the Beatles in the UK, the, the pop music which you very well know and remember. Um, and the European Union, in fact, uh, started at the same time. If you, uh, if you remember, the, the, the Rome Treaty was signed in 1957. In, in, in uh, so the 60s were the start of the European Union. At the start, at the time, it was the marché commun, the common market. So it was uh, limited to economic ground. But um, in fact, it uh, created a very positive environment for the development of each uh, European country. And you must also remember that at the time uh, Germany was divided. And the mentality is, uh, of the French at the time is very much reflected in um, a reflection of a French writer named François Mauriac. I don't know if you know it. It was, I love so much Germany that I, I wish uh, there, would be, there would be three of them. <laughs> uh, of course, for France, it was a good period of time because it was clearly the, the leader in Europe. Germany was divided. Uh, the UK was uh, recovering also rather slowly from the Second World War, which uh, hit them very, very much. And the government at the time, if you remember, there was a very socialist government, which didn't uh, help them very much in developing the country. The Thatcher times came only in the 80s. So in the 60s and the 70s, uh, in France, yeah, there was a lot of optimism. And uh, uh, with De Gaulle, with Pompidou, with Giscard, and even with the early Mitterrand, uh, the Frenchmen, the French didn't ask themselves many questions. In fact, they considered themselves as uh, leaders in Europe. After that, in the 80s, uh, after, uh, during the reign of uh, François Mitterrand, during the reign of the socialists, uh, there began to be a slow economic decline due to the socialization of the economy. And uh, all, of a all of a sudden came the breakdown of the Berlin Wall in 89 which created a completely new environment in Europe with a united Germany. And with time, it took a lot of time because in Germany, uh, uh, the Germans had to solve their own problems between West and Eastern Germany, which are not completely solved today. But nevertheless, they uh, recovered rapidly and due to their size, due to the uh, number of their population and due to their uh, natural uh, uh, industry, uh, which they inherited from a long history, in fact, they became more or less uh, leaders in European economy. But whether they are the leaders in, uh, in political terms is, uh, um, is debatable, because uh, even with Angela Merkel, which is a very good chancellor, uh, you don't see the Germans wanting too much to lead Europe. Uh, because of the past, because of the history, they are very cautious. And if you consider uh, the recent uh, uh, bad relationship with the Poles and what the Poles are saying against Germany, I think they are, uh, they, they are reasonable to, to be cautious. And so for France and for UK and also for Italy and Spain, there, there is a room to play and uh, there is no natural leader in Europe today. Uh, there are uh, five major countries competing with each other to, to take leadership, but uh, it's a game.